Welcome to part two of this two-part series describing the basics of interpreting data from a flight data recorder. If you have not yet watched part one, I'd recommend you do so first. I've included a link to that video below. You will recall from part one that we discussed how to locate a particular parameter in the binary data by utilizing a type of indexing system consisting of subframes, words, and bits. In this video, we're going to look at how to convert those bits into meaningful values that represent data such as recorded airspeed and altitude. We commonly refer to these as engineering units. Before getting into the specifics of flight data recorder conversions, we should take a look at what exactly binary data is. Don't worry, you don't need to be an expert on this, but some background knowledge will be helpful. The digits making up a binary number can only be a 1 or a 0. The range of numbers you can work with is defined by the number of bits you have allocated to store the 1 or 0. Here we see an example of the numbers we can display with 3 bits. In this case, we can display 2 to the power of 3 or 8 numbers, the numbers being 0 to 7. You will sometimes see a number range defined as 0 to 2 to the power of n minus 1, where n is the number of bits available. That's all we need to cover about binary numbers. If you would like more information, an internet search will reveal a wealth of information on the topic. Now we can look at the most common ways raw binary data is converted into meaningful engineering units. The first type of conversion we will look at is a simple discrete parameter in which a bit represents a precise state. For example, left gear position could be represented in a single bit, with 0 indicating the gear is retracted and 1 indicating it is extended. This would work for parameters with more than two states as well. For example, left thrust reverser could use 0, 0 to indicate reversers are stowed, 0, 1 to indicate they are in transit, and 1, 0 to indicate they are deployed. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward, so let's take a look at something a bit more involved such as airspeed. In this example, airspeed is defined as being stored in 10 bits, so it will have a binary range of 0 to 1023. You might be thinking that's a high range for commercial civilian aircraft, but what the 10 bits allow manufacturers to do is have each bit represent 0.5 knots rather than 1 knot. This is done by multiplying the raw binary value by 0.5, giving us an engineering units range of 0 to 511.5 knots in 0.5 knot increments. This conversion is sometimes referred to as resolution or slope since it represents the slope of the plot of raw counts versus engineering units. Some parameters may also have an offset in addition to a slope. Take the example of vertical acceleration. Vertical acceleration is typically stored in 12 bits, but it could have an engineering units range of negative 3 to plus 6g. This would give us a resolution of roughly 0.0022g per bit. But we also need an offset of negative 3, so that 0 raw counts equals negative 3g. For some parameters, it's not practical to use an offset since half of the parameters are negative. Bank angle is an example of that. The range of bank angle can be from negative 180 to positive 180 for left and right bank angles. Rather than use a large offset, the parameter may be defined as signed, which is also referred to less frequently as two's complement, whereby half of the values are negative. In a sign parameter, the most significant bit is called the sign bit and determines whether the value is positive or negative. This graph illustrates how the raw counts of a 12-bit sign parameter would look. The binary range in the case of 12 bits is negative 2048 to 2047 rather than 0 to 4095. Once you tell your system that a parameter is signed, the rest of the process to convert the raw counts is very similar to what we have seen so far. For the example of bank angle, this is a sign parameter with a conversion or slope of 0.0879. The only thing to really be aware of is that in many, if not all systems, you need to define the parameter as being signed before applying any additional conversion. Sometimes 12 bits isn't enough to give us an acceptable resolution to a parameter. Let's consider latitude. 
with an engineering unit's range of minus 90 to plus 90 degrees, a 12-bit signed word would give us a resolution of roughly 0 0.044 degrees, or more than 2.5 nautical miles. This isn't very precise when we are trying to determine what runway an aircraft touched down on, not to mention where along the runway it touched down. Manufacturers overcome this limitation by creating combined parameters, where two smaller binary words are joined to create a single, larger binary word. These intermediate parts are normally named most significant part and least significant part, or coarse and fine. In the example of latitude, the least significant part is defined as being 12 bits, while the most significant part is 5 bits, including a sign bit. These two parts are combined to create a single 17-bit signed word. With an engineering range of minus 90 to plus 90 degrees, we can now have a resolution of approximately 0 0.08 nautical miles, or roughly 500 feet. Note that sometimes words are combined with overlapping bits, as illustrated in the graphic. The result of combining these two words is still a 17-bit word, but two of the bits illustrated overlap. You need to be aware of this only insofar as to tell your data analysis software to compensate for these overlapping bits. It will do the rest of the work for you. The last conversion type that we will look at is what is referred to as a superframe parameter. Superframe parameters are parameters that are recorded less frequently than once every four seconds or once per frame. Typical superframe parameters would include date, gross weight, flight number, and any other parameters that would change very infrequently during a flight. A superframe parameter consists of two parts. Each is identified by a separate word in the data frame. The first part is the cycle counter. This parameter counts up from 1 or 0 to its maximum value, normally 15 or 16, and then repeats from the beginning. The second part is the word that contains the actual parameter value itself. This would be like any other binary word we've looked at so far, but the difference is that the actual parameter stored in a particular word varies depending on the cycle counter value. Some examples are illustrated here. When defining your superframe parameters in your data analysis software, you need to define the location of both parts. As usual, your software will take care of the hard work for you, but one important thing to watch out for is how the counter range is defined. Some manufacturers define a counter range beginning at zero, while your software may start at one, or vice versa. Adjust your counter values accordingly so you get the appropriate parameter value. That covers the most common types of data conversions you're likely to encounter when working with a flight data recorder or a quick access recorder. There are other types of conversions possible, but the recorder or data acquisition unit manufacturer will normally provide all the necessary information. Thank you for watching these videos. We hope you found them informative and useful. If you have any questions or suggestions for other training videos, please send us an email at info at